Hi everyone. Broody behaviour is often undesired in our backyard chooks because we want them to be laying eggs rather than sitting on them. Brooding is a very natural behaviour and allows the reproductive tract to rest. However, it certainly comes with its own risks and especially if those eggs aren't even fertile, you can make a very good case for preventing them to brood for their own health. This is especially the case if they are what we call persistent brooders, meaning they don't stop sitting when we would naturally expect those hormones to tell them to stop. So whether they are sitting on fertile eggs, whether you are allowing them to sit for an appropriate length of time, or whether they are persistent brooders and you're struggling to get them off that nest, there are certain health issues you need to keep a really close eye on to keep them healthy while they are in this very vulnerable position. Let's jump into an in-field demonstration of examining a broody hen as we check her for external parasites, pneumonia, stiff joints and excessive weight loss, as well as keeping her safe from predators. Now the first thing I need you to make sure is that she is in fact broody. It is really, really common for hens to come into the clinic when they are much too far gone to save and the owner has thought that they were sitting on a nest because they were broody, when in fact they were actually just very, very sick. A broody hen is determined, she is not weak, she's agitated if you approach. She may well be calmer than usual and more easily handled because her hormones are actually calming her down but she'll be agitated and usually quite vocal at you if you try to remove her from that nest. We also call broody hens clucky hens because they have a characteristic cluck 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 sound which is a warning to you to leave her alone if you approach. If you move her off the nest, she may potter for a minute, stretch her legs and maybe get a bite to eat, but she should not look tired. She should quickly run straight back to her nest after a minute or two. Her eyes should not be closing. Her comb should not be an abnormal colour. These are all signs of a critically sick hen. If you move her off that nest and she can't stand or doesn't stand for long before lying back down again in one spot, that is sickness behaviour, not broody behaviour. And then to complicate things further, a broody hen is at higher risk of becoming ill in certain ways. This is where the tutorial comes in. Let's jump into it. Are you just lovely? Yeah? Are you feeling very sloppy and sleepy? I hope you guys can hear me over the cluck of Miss Sylvie here because she is not happy about being <laughs> about being pulled off her babies <laughs> so she sees it. So when a chick goes clucky it comes down to a few factors, a lot of it's genetic um, but we are looking for the right combination of hormones and then when all the stars are lined, her prolactin levels are going to start rising. But now let's have a look over her and make sure she's in good health. So one of the things we're looking for for these guys is to make sure that they're not developing any kind of nerve weakness or musculoskeletal weakness in those legs. As you can imagine developing pins and needles, if you sit with pins and needles for long enough, you will develop irreversible nerve damage. But the other reason we see it is from inflamed joints. Sometimes chooks have a low level of underlying arthritis that we wouldn't normally recognize, but when they're sitting down and their joints are stiff, we might see that cropping up. So we wanna make sure that there's no sign of weakness in the legs for sure. We wanna make sure she's not lame at all. So if you flip them on their back here, hello sweetness, hey hello. If I place my finger underneath her toes and push, her little toes should wrap around my finger. And that's the perch reflex. That's what allows them to perch at night and actually fall asleep. So can you see here, her legs are nice and strong. She's giving me good resistance. She's actually gripping really nice and strong with her toes. Good girl. You're wondering what on earth is going on. Good girl, sweetheart. Now if she's got weak legs for some reason, you'll see flaccid toes, she'll hang her legs beneath her and she physically won't be able to walk easily or she might be walking with what looks like a limp. So Miss Sylvie's looking really good there, she's actually not giving me a lot to work with for the, <laughs> for the sake of the video. One of the key things we want to check is absolutely their body condition. So even with a normal lay period, even nesting with healthy broody behaviour, they are going to lose a certain amount of weight. And that's one of the big things that we want to mitigate. That's one of the risks, is if they sit for too long, 
they can lose too much weight. So flip them over, have a little feel of the keel bone here. Right down in the middle between the legs, we've got that nice sharp breast bone that you can feel, it's a bit pointy. Now we don't want it to be feeling too sharp. We want it to feel like a nice triangle down either side of that keel bone. So she's actually got really good coverage, a surprising amount of coverage. You wouldn't expect this much coverage in something like a brown shaver in a little layer. So, um, so she's feeling really good. We don't need to worry too much about her there. I would put her right at a healthy weight, even if she wasn't nesting. So that's looking great. Now we can feel in her crop it's very small, it's very doughy at the moment. So that's telling us she's not eating a lot right now and that's normal for nesting behavior. If she wasn't nesting, we'd wanna know that that's got some food in it if she's had access to food. So another one of the key things to rule out here and to make sure that you're really up to date with their treatments is that when these guys are nesting, they are gonna be at high risk for carrying heavy burdens of external parasites. So that's gonna be your northern fowl mite, which are the big black mites they tend to thrive in cooler weather. So they're the ones we see year round, especially during winter time. As long as temperature's under 20 degrees Celsius, we're gonna see northern fowl mites. Our red mites are obviously very high risk in warmer weather. So those are our summertime mites. And of course, as the climate gets warmer around the world, they're becoming a bigger issue year round as well. Red mites are the ones that are nocturnal. They live in the nest. They live in the house inside the coop. So when these guys are nesting, they're just sitting ducks, almost literally. They're sitting there just picking up really heavy burdens of red mites, which certainly drink their blood and in large numbers will make them deathly anemic. So it's not uncommon to lose hens sitting on the nest because of red mites literally drinking them dry. So let's have a check for external parasites here. A good place to check for external parasites for your mites and for lice as well is around the back end. Your northern fowl mites are going to be down below the vent. They can just look like dirt. So let's have a check. So I can't actually see any northern fowl mites down there at all. This shook's an exceptionally good health. We're going to place her on her back. And we're just looking for lice as well. So those can be hanging down, usually around underneath the vent or off the thighs as well, or under over the breastbone. So we'll have a little look for those. Now, when we're looking for lice, sometimes you'll see the adults, but often what we see are the hard, white, concrete looking big balls of knit eggs. So very, very firm, they look like concrete, and they attach to the shaft of the feather at the base of the feather there. So that's what we're looking for. Now she, I can't see any lice on her at all. I can't see any northern fowl mites on her, which would be on her during the day, so that's fantastic. Now because Miss Sylvie is sitting down low on the ground in a dusty nest for a long period of time, she's also gonna be at high risk of developing pneumonia. Just because of the dust flying around there and being low close to the ammonia fumes from her own excrement. So I'm going to go ahead and have a listen with my stethoscope, have a listen to her lungs and her ear sacs, make sure there's nothing untoward going on there. For you guys at home, what you want to look for is any sign of increased effort with breathing. So a stretched neck, open mouth breathing. In the early stages, what you're going to see is just increased abdominal effort. So usually that's seen as a tail. If they're taking deeper breaths than they normally would, you'll see bobbing of the tail. She looks absolutely beautiful. I have a little listen anyway. You're in great health, my love. So everything's sounding really good there. Nice, strong heartbeat. Her lungs sound nice and clear. Now lungs are quite different in birds than they are in mammals. They're actually adhered up here underneath the rib cage, which is really interesting. So we're listening up very high with the stethoscope. As I say at home, you're just looking for increased respiratory effort. If it's gotten to the point where she's wide open mouth breathing, she needs emergency help or a euthanasia. Okay, that tells us that she's really struggling for air. Miss Sylvie here is absolutely fine, so she doesn't need any treatment there. She's doing really well. So for a chook, her comb gives us a lot of information here. You can think of them like our mucous membranes, our conjunctiva. So if they're looking really pale, that can tell us that she might be anemic. 
or that she might have poor circulation for some reason. So she's looking nice and pink, which is really good. I don't have any concerns of red mites here. Now, Miss Sylvie here's an adult hen. She will have a certain immunity against your gut worms, your nematodes there. We don't want to go dredging if we don't need to, too regularly, otherwise our dredges stop working. With her, I'm not seeing any sign of weight loss, of ill thrift. I'm not seeing any sign of diarrhea. There's not been any worms showing in her eggs. There's nothing to imply that she's dealing with a heavy gut load here, so I'm not gonna worm her right now. The one thing I have noticed on Miss Sylvie is she has got a little bit of leg mites. Now these are called scaly leg mites. This isn't something they're particularly high risk of during the nesting period, but we're gonna go ahead and treat her anyway with our external spot on. And this is what you'd also use for northern fowl mites. For red mites, if you're suspicious of that, really want to use a very good drug and you want to deal with the environment as well check out this episode here if you think you're dealing with red mites causing a pale comb and anemia but for her let's have a look here so we can see that on the base of her toes on her legs she's actually got crusting she's got scales standing up on end and when this gets bad enough and the mites get heavy enough they will cause pain, they cause open wounds that she causes to herself from the irritation, and they certainly need treatment. The longer it's been going on, the harder they are to get on top of. So we do have good research telling us that our spot-on treatment generally works pretty well for our scaly leg mites, but we do need to throw in a couple of extra precautions. So to treat scaly leg mite, we definitely want to use an external treatment there um, to really what we're aiming to do is just suffocate the mites here. So whether you're using a leg spray um, which has some really soothing oils in there or if you're using a basic Vaseline, either way what we're trying to do is suffocate the mites that live under the scale. So really important to get out your old toothbrush before it's thrown out and then get up there and once you've sprayed on or laid it in Vaseline, you, need, you do need to scrub it up underneath the scales to make contact with the mites. Now the added benefit of using your toothbrush is all this thickened skin is going to come off as well. So it also acts as a bit of an exfoliant which is lovely for healing but it's also and more importantly going to mean that we're going to make contact with those mites with the spray. So getting up under those scales and of course this needs to be repeated. Well done Miss Sylvie. Well done my love. Now Miss Sylvie here is usually very, very skittish. So her docile behavior right now is actually probably due to her prolactin levels being high, which do have a bit of a calming effect there. So she obviously wants to get back to her eggs, but she's being very lovely to handle. So to try and help prevent weakness of the legs, excessive pins and needles progressing to irreversible nerve damage, if she's not getting off and going for a good wander on her own for 15, 20 minutes a day, we need to encourage her to do that. So let's go ahead and take her just a wee distance away from the hen house where her nest is, pop her down. We might find that she sits, if she's still in that kind of snuggly fluffed up stage, she might sit for a few minutes. Eventually she's gonna get up, stretch up those legs and move around, hopefully have a feed, a bit of a dust bath if we're lucky before heading back to her nest. Let's see how she goes. <laughs> 